Hey all here, OS Reviews. You're watching our hands-on review of the Handscape Muja. This is a touchpad designed for smartphones, works with both Android and iOS. It attaches onto the back of your phone and then you can use it to access special triggers and commands when playing back games. So it's essentially having a second touchscreen put onto the rear of your device. Here's a quick video explaining the product. And easier and smoother. Elevate your gaming adventure and experience more wins. Introducing to you the Muja Gamepad. The whole of the front side is a one-piece touch panel divided into four function keys, allowing you to customize the function keys and strokes. The back adopts suction cup design, which is easy to install and attach to your phone. It is compatible with most mainstream games, such as sports games, MOBA, and FPS, etc. Six-finger control, running, turning, aiming, shooting at the same time. Definitely a pretty cool commercial, and it uses Bluetooth to connect to your phone, and again, it's multi-touch enabled, so you can access multiple clicks and keys at the same time on the trackpad. This is a fairly new company, I believe it's a startup, they're based in Shenzhen, China. Other uses for the touchpad include accessing it as a selfie key, so you can tap on the back to take an image without obstructing the display. You've got a quick user manual that documents, again, setting up the touchpad, downloading the companion application, and we also have a micro USB cable for charging. So a closer look at the design, it does have a pretty gaming-centric look with these very sharp edges and corners. It's pretty slim, so it doesn't add too much weight, but it feels rather sturdy. It's not hollow at all. On the side here is where we have the micro USB port for charging, and finally on the top here is just the key that you can tap on to turn it on. So opening up the M Plus app, right now we are going to pair it by tapping on the power key again for a few seconds and we should hopefully see the LEDs in the top turn blue as you can see there. So click the icon corresponding to the shell area to blink. So if I tap on L1 you can see that right now it's blinking and L2 is the second region, L3 is this region, L4 is this region. What that means though is it is lacking a little tactile sensation. Oftentimes with gaming accessories, I do prefer something like a physical button. And there's also no vibration motor built on in, so it's not going to actually rattle to give you the sensation of a real key. So that definitely is a compromise. To make it look more modern and slim, they decided to use more of a traditional digitizer technology as opposed to something that might be more tactile. The next screen allows us to add which games and programs we want the Muja to work with. So I can tap on Add App and have our full list of applications on the phone. So for instance, if I want to add Opus the game here, it will wait for a few seconds and add the game so that whenever I open up the game next time, it will have the controller as an option. And under settings is where we can take a look at additional controls. So there's PUBG special customization that you can set up but because it's a bit more of a complicated game and it's a very popular title. So they, they are using it as a demo. So you can use the different sections to do different things like shooting, creeping, squatting, uh, so on and so forth, jumping. So you can have different types of commands uh, categorized to different regions on the touchpad. So returning there, there's a preset game already. We can also see if there's any firmware updates, and there's also kind of a test here, so that is probably just a line showing us where our fingers are moving along on the touchpad. Now if we try something like multi-touch, you can see that it is, it is indeed working as well. So it can register two fingers at the same time, uh, three fingers as well. So now let's try attaching this onto the back of the phone. Now as a preface, uh, something to keep in mind is if you have a fingerprint scanner on some devices, it may obstruct it from view temporarily. So it's using suction cups, it's pretty easy to remove and reattach, but it probably won't be able to stick onto the back of your phone at all times unless you have a front-facing fingerprint scanner. Ergonomics actually feel pretty good, again, because it still is relatively slim, but the tapered edges actually make your hands kind of naturally reach toward the, towards these four customizable spots. Let's try opening up a game, let's say Skull Towers for now. Essentially, it has the Muja controller or the M app running as an instance with a window on top. So this is the only change. And if we tap on this icon here, that's where we can customize a layout key. And you can see that right now we have just two virtual keys, which are the 
two bottom regions of the touchpad activated. So I can tap on add over here to add a custom setup. So right now, for instance, I've added one. And if I select this, you can see that now I have four virtual keys all popping up at once. Now, these four points are essentially acting as parts of the screen that you would normally tap on with your fingers. So you can actually drag them around to different spots of where you would want to always hit. Drag it around and customize it on top of where the typical analog keys would be for your fingers so that they will actually correspond to the right positions of your game. I can also tap on a point directly to see more advanced settings, such as uh, changing maybe the touch delay, so how long you want the response to be before the key triggers an actual movement. And you can also add some more complex uh, combinations. I can tap on plus to create more virtual spots. But now the game thinks I'm touching those three spots at the same time. And then just tapping on that once will access that command for you with a click of a single button. So it's able to execute a sequence using one click. And then once you're satisfied, obviously you don't want this to be obstructing your screen, so you can tap on close, so this will shrink down. The keys are still going to be functional during gameplay, but you will no longer see that layer on top of your screen, so you get that extra immersion without blocking off parts of your display. Now it's charging and the LEDs will strobe red, so it looks pretty cool. Now some downsides to keep in mind is even though it works really well for arcade style games and first person shooter games like PUBG, uh, for example, it doesn't work quite as well for casual gaming because the touchpad itself cannot be calibrated to do a continuous motion like a mouse. Titles that require a lot of simple swiping using the touchscreen will not be replaced using this pad, which is why as you saw in our demo of uh, playing back some arcade arcade games for moving around the characters on the screen, I'm still using the touchscreen for that. But for shooting and other special commands, that's where I'm tapping on the back of the touchpad. Some final remarks. Now, in gaming history, touchpads aren't completely new. They made an appearance on the PS Vita, where on the rear you could actually use your fingers as a touchpad, and on Vivo's new flagship, the Nex, which has a dual display, the rear screen also acts as a touchpad when you are using it in the gaming mode, as you can see here. However, this is really the first time that it's used as a third-party accessory that you can simply stick onto any regular cell phone. That's compared to getting a completely new phone that sells for over $900 right now, uh, or in the case of the PS Vita, a dedicated gaming console. It definitely shows a lot of potential and promise. I love that this is a very innovative product that hasn't been seen before on the market, and I always applaud something new. So I do like the direction that the company is taking. There are definitely, again, software areas which can be improved upon for the functionality, but all in all, not a bad accessory if you want to make gaming a little bit easier on your phone, especially if you love arcade or first-person shooters that have uh, more difficult and complex key combinations. So you can check out more details if interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.